Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Jake's RC Stuff uh, where today we're going to be looking at doing the basic setup of the FY41. Now the vast majority of this is going to be based off of the menu on the flight controller because to be honest with you doing the rest of the setup is fairly bloody easy. Uh, in terms of connecting stuff it really is just very self-explanatory compared to the wires on the um, on the on the um, uh, pictures I suppose or the markings on the flight controller actually getting stuff plugged in is very simple uh, in terms of your servos they are the Futaba style of um, connecting things so S1 is aileron, S2 is elevator, S3 is throttle, S4 is rudder um, as to whether you can put something into S6 to run a second aileron I can't actually remember um, because I don't think I've ever used up past four. Um, the other thing that I would mention is if you want to keep full control over the speed controller and have the ESC plugged directly into your receiver and bypass the FY41, that's how all of mine are set up, you need to make sure you're providing back power to the flight controller through um, the uh, channel 3, S3 port. Um, so if you're using separate BEC, just run that to the FI-41, it'll back feed your receiver fine and feed directly into the servos. If you really wanted to, you could come up with like a custom lead to make it so that the built-in BEC on your speed controller could do that, but it's not really recommended. Um, yeah, it's really not hard to program them all together, and of course, if you are um, putting the speed controller into channel 3 on your receiver, or the, or the throttle channel on your receiver, then you'll just ignore the... Um, wire for the throttle as well um so um in terms of getting it set up you have and i'm gonna grab my phone just to make sure i get these the right way around you have two different switches so you have one that is essentially your autonomous modes so at one end you can have either um, continuous straight line or auto circle mode and then the other way you have return to launch and then if you have the switch in the middle um you are um, going over to the other switch um, which would deal with um, RC mode, ABM and 3D mode so RC mode is completely manual and it is completely manual like no difference between having an FI-41 in there or not um, then auto balance is level so you need to make sure that your flight controller is set level and you've calibrated it to level in the menu again we'll go into that and then 3D mode um, is usually what I fly in because what's very good is you can, for example, put your plane into a climb, let go of it, it'll stay in that climb. And also, if you're flying a plane that's quite new and you haven't quite got it flat um, for for the normal ABM mode to work, then um, the 3D mode, 3D position hold is fine. So, when you're connecting it together, you will have two different switch wires which go into your receiver. Um, switch 1 is a one that deals with RC, ABM and Auto Circle mode. Put that into channel 5. And switch 2 is the one that deals with return to launch, other, or Auto Circle mode or line mode, however you've got it set up, uh, which I put into channel 6. Now, in order to access the menu, um, it's fairly simple. All you need to do is have that switch 2 that normally deals with return to launch and auto circle mode in the middle So it's looking at the second switch or the first switch technically because In my opinion the number the wrong way around uh, and then I'll switch one on channel 5 You just sort of switch it back and forth all the way between RC and 3d mode So sort of click 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 so not click 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 fast as you can um, but you know, sort of steady intervals about 10 or 15 times, and then just leave it and you'll pop into the menu, it'll go off the normal on screen display and onto the menu. Um, I always recommend to put your lens cap on or just something dark in front of the camera to make the white text easy to see. But it is very easy to program, as we'll go into now. Okay, so on the screen, you should be able to see the menu that you get into when you flick that switch backward and forth. Um, so the first sort of box up in the top left that says servo gain and rev. Fairly self-explanatory, yeah. so you've got aileron, elevator, throttle, rudder. Um, I don't use throttle through the um, flight controller. Um, I, have, I have now learned that the way that it works things, I would probably be okay with putting the throttle through the flight controller, but we were always nervous of it setting off on its own and injuring people. That's why we always kept it separate. And on failsafe, we just said it's like 75%, so we've got way more than enough throttle to keep it going around okay. Um, so anyway, ele aileron, elevator, throttle, rudder, 
uh, merged the different types of servos. Um, one thing that I will quickly mention actually before going any further is if you have dual rates on your plane, when you're in this menu, make sure that you are um, in full 100% you know, rates. Um, another thing as well is sometimes the menu is technically the wrong way around because of reversing or something like that. Occasionally it does happen. And if you're using a flying wing or a V-tail or anything like that, then um, take that out of your radio, just set it up as a normal plane with one aileron servo, um, and you do all the mixing in here, which is, as you can probably guess, in the mix setting that we'll see in a second. Um, so we've got everyone elevated from the rudder, gain 50%. The vast majority of models, that's fine. Um, the plane that this is in, which is the Dart XL, I actually do need to turn the aileron either up or down. It was as I was slowing down, it started getting wobbly. So I presume it needs to actually be a little bit higher. Um, and then reverse, that is gyro reverse. So say, for example, you tilt the nose of the plane down and it puts in down elevator, then you would change it from where it says nor for normal to reverse. Um, and the way you, you would do it is you would go, so as you see on at least a screenshot I have on here, there's like an arrow next to null. Um, I will edit it in the video editing to tell you where it is, um, if it's not on null for you now. Um, but basically, you use the up and down elevator, or channel 2, uh, to move up and down. And then you use left and right aileron to set or move things up and down. So, so, for example, with gain, you'd go down to whichever gain you wanted, and if you put aileron to the right, it goes up, aileron down, it goes down. Or aileron left, sorry, it goes down. So, if, for example, you wanted to reverse elevator, you would keep pressing, you know, down, 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 sort of press and release the thing. You can press and hold, and it will start skimming through things, but for the up and down, it's a bit quick. So, it goes for all the gains, and then down to the reverses, you just move it right, and it would swap from nor to reverse. And, of course, the only thing that is similar to iNav is, remember, to save and exit. Um, now the next one down is switch mode. Um, so this is the uh, is it switch number two, I believe it is. I'm checking my phone again for my notes on this. Uh, no, switch one. Uh, no, switch two. It is switch two. So this is what would happen there. So for example, I have it go home null and line. That's how it is out of the box. Um, at least on the screenshot I'm here when I'm recording this. Um, what I would normally do is change line to circle. So it'll, that's sort of the equivalent of loiter mode if you've used iNav and things like that before. So it just circles around wherever it is. Uh, and middle, I always have set to null, so it'll then go across to the uh, other switch, which is RC, ABM, and 3D. Um, you can't change those, that's, that's not a thing that you can do, at least through this menu. Whether you can do it through the computer version, I don't know, but I, I never use the computer version anymore. Uh, install setting, this is a bit strange, to be brutally honest. Um, basically, this is which direction the board is sitting. Um, so, upwards is the right way around, so the arrow on the flight controller pointing forward. They've also got backwards, and I believe you can do left and right if you've got it mounted sideways on. Upwards and backwards, I use quite a lot. Uh, it depends on the, on the model. Um... Again, um, it, it really does depend on the model. Um, for example, I believe the reason why it's upwards or forwards would be the correct way of putting it, I suppose, in the um, Dart XL is because the flight controller is actually behind where the leads come out. And I believe all the leads go in the front, if I remember correctly. I can't remember. Double check it yourself. Um, now, flight, which is the box in the top right, um, half of this doesn't technically work if you don't have the motor going into the... Um, flight controller. So speed, that is the speed it attempts to keep uh, during autonomous flight, whether that is circle mode, line mode, return to launch, whatever. That's the speed it will do, and it's in kilometres an hour. There's no way to put this into miles an hour, unfortunately, or in feet and stuff, so some Americans might get upset. Um, circle radius is as it describes when you're in circle mode or when you've done return to launch and it comes back and hits circle mode and that's the circumference of that circle um so 80 meters round us um maximum distance basically when you hit that amount so at the minute i believe at the box it's set to 4k i think i can't 100 percent remember uh, basically it hits return to launch and won't let you get out of return to launch until it's back behind four kilometers um 
if you want my recommendation is if you want to either raise or lower that by a considerable amount is create a p mix if you're on like futaba or spectrum basically create a mixer that when you flick a switch on your radio it puts in full right or left aileron just so you can have it sit there and just tick through all the numbers just take a while it's the worst bit of doing this menu um or if, for example if you've got a free sky um, if you go into your uh, like special functions um, and set up like a, a channel override for channel one um, but with all of these of course make sure you disable them um, or delete them or whatever before you fly because you don't want to actually hit a switch and just go into a roll that you can't work out what's happening uh, airspeed adjustment is just my understanding is with the airspeed sensor if it's because of altitude and things like that if it's reading too high or too low you can move that up or down um mix settings so this is all about how you have your um you know what type of plane it's in so it's it's, it's sort of regular elevon which is your flying wing and then vtel which is vtel like your mini talent and things and they also have the same three but in reverse so my idea is like if you have your vtel halves plugged in the other way around you can do reverse but i would say just put it the right way around um and then as for config, um, you would go down to these, press right, the the text would disappear depending on which one you're on, and come back when it's, it's finished. So initiate gyro, that's when you want to have the plane nice and solid and stable. Apologies for Windows Defender, screwing me for some reason. Um, but you know, you would have it set level, you would go down to init gyro, go right aileron to activate it, it will then set that as level. Um, Initiate airspeed, same type of thing, especially if you're like going up a mountain compared to being quite near sea level. The idea is you'll just init airspeed and um, it would, it, based off of air pressure, things like that, it would make it a bit more accurate. And then, of course, at the very end, down to save and exit right, and then you would just go back to your normal um, on screen display screen. So, hopefully, that all makes sense. Um, as I say, I believe I had the canopy of the dark XL in front of this to um, create the dark image so you can see the white text. Um, again, if you're using a normal camera, just stick the lens cap on it. Um, but yeah, if you have any problems at all, um, then feel free to leave a comment. Subscribe if you're new. Uh, like if it helped you at all. Um, and, and comment, as I say, if you have any questions at all, comment and I will try my best to get back to you. Um... But yes, um, so this was sort of the very basic setup guidance, especially more to do with the um, on-screen display programming menu. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>